Hey guys, welcome back. So today I've got a home white Super 2 chainsaw and it belongs to my neighbor. He recently brought it to a local shop complaining that it was stalling under high throttle and wanted them to fix it. That shop turned him away, basically saying this machine was too old. And I found out about this and offered to help. So here it is. And I, I did bring this outside already and tried it out. I'll show you a quick clip of that now. What I saw is that it ran fine at high RPM, but it did take a little while to get there. And at low RPM, it would eventually stall or, you know, it would bog down when I go to throttle it back up. So at a minimum, the carburetor needs to be adjusted. And that's what I was going to do. But then I got to thinking, you know, this machine is better part of a quarter century old. And I don't know if anyone's ever cleaned or rebuilt this carburetor. So I wanna give them back a machine that's gonna last another 10, 20 years. So the right thing to do here is to get that carb off, clean it up and rebuild it. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let me get you set up in the stand and get started. Starting to see why the local shop may have turned down this business. To service this carburetor, it's not a straightforward thing. And most likely the labor charge just to service this carb is probably more than the saw is worth. Uh, you take something like this steel chainsaw you need to service the carb, it's pretty straightforward. Just give this a turn, pull the cover off, and you're in. The home light seems like they designed it maybe with service not in mind. Because uh, to get access to this carburetor, you need to remove the chain, the bar, the recoil, the handle, ignition switch, spark plug, and the bolts. Two on the top, two on the bottom, and literally slide the block out of this shell. So that's what we're going to do. There we go. You don't need to take this handle off, but I find it's kind of blocking the view. I already removed one line from this fuel tank, and that was the line connected to the primer bulb, which is just the fuel return. This one's connected to the fuel filter, which goes into you know, the bottom of the carb. I'm just gonna pull that off. And 
and get this out of the way. I'm gonna pull the oil lines off. So I'm just gonna mark the oil line that goes down here, closer to the carb. It's not too bad, actually. I was expecting worse. This doesn't look too bad. I mean, these valves are actually fairly flat, although it is starting to get a little crunchy, but it's not that bad. And this pump This diaphragm is also halfway decent. Overall, it came out pretty good. Not that the inside was that bad to begin with, but there was some debris in here. And the outside, of course, looks a lot better as well. Anyway, I forgot to take these jets out, so I have since removed them and sprayed some carb cleaner down the passages. And I was just getting ready to put this back together. And I was kind of lining stuff up here. You know, this is the old stuff on the top, new stuff on the bottom. And starting to realize that although these are close, they are different. Most notable is that this one has this little hole right there. And that lines up on the carburetor with this, which passes engine vacuum to this oil pump. This diaphragm doesn't have a hole in the right spot and basically just completely blocks that. So this is not gonna work. And this new check valve here, completely different, not even close to being compatible. So. I ordered the wrong kit, and I knew it was a shot in the dark. Originally, I just ordered based on Home Light Super 2 carburetor kit, and Walbro was the one that came up, so that's what I ordered. And now that I know what this carb looks like, I went online and did a quick search for H171YF, and I didn't really come up with an exact match, so I had to change the search to just, you know, Home Light chainsaw carburetor and eventually I came across one that looked like this and it's made by a company called Zama Z-A-M-A -A, and found a parts diagram unfortunately it's all been discontinued even the rebuild kit so I did manage to locate something on eBay I'm sure it's a uh, clone kit but it looked like it matched as far as the new parts go. So I placed an order, I'm gonna wait for that. You know, I still would like to use a new kit if I can. Otherwise, the old one is still usable. So worst case, I'll just put this stuff back in. The new kits arrived. Uh, the top items here are the old and the bottom are the new. And you can see they are a match. So I will go ahead and install the new kit. Uh, this kit also came with a few other items. I don't need all of them in this case. Uh, the gasket and the screen and all that look pretty good on this carb, uh, but I will switch out the needle and spring as well as the arm and the pin.
you can get it. That spring needs to be on the other side of that dimple. So now I'm just gonna put the pin in and tighten it up. Kind of bend this up just a little bit. They, I think they make a special tool to adjust this. And you can see it's not too bad, but you do want it roughly level with the surface, maybe a little bit under. So it's pretty close. Don't want to adjust it too much. It's pretty good. You know, without the right tool, I can't be sure, but it's, it's pretty close. Hopefully it's close enough. Before putting that carburetor back on, I want to check the reed valve. Now, I don't know if this is going to come off easily without putting up a fight. So I'm going to try loosening these screws. Actually, they're pretty loose already. And see if I can't pop off the intake. And just take a look at that reed valve. That reed valve looks good. It's a nice tight seal going around, so I'm just gonna put it back the way that it is. So I just realized I had the oil lines wrong and I've already corrected the problem. This outermost line at the end should be the one that goes down to the oiler for the chain. This middle one here is the oil intake from the oil tank. And then the one furthest away is just, I believe the extra oil cycles through and goes back so that this is the oil return. Before sliding this back into the machine, there's one problem I want to deal with, and that's the purge bulb. Uh, this one actually works, but it's missing one of the tabs here. There's supposed to be a tab on each side so that when you push it in, it just clicks into place. And it still works, but it kind of flops around in there. So uh, I do have this one. I had ordered a couple of these uh, about a year ago for a Ryobi leaf blower I had fixed. And this part is exactly the same as this one. So I should just be able to swap it out and keep going. There we go. So just take note of how this goes in. The end here faces out toward the flywheel. That goes right on here. Now we'll have to test it once it's in just to make sure it's not hitting any fuel lines, but this looks fine. I'm probably just gonna hook it kind of around this fuel line. Maybe it'll help it stay while I slide it in. Or 
orientation on the switch doesn't matter too much or which wire gets plugged in where. Uh, the way it was is that off was facing back and that's how I'm reconnecting it. Okay, there we go. When I was pulling the spark plug wire through, I noticed the insulation was missing from a chunk right here. And it looked like it was touching, must have been burned off from touching the exhaust. And that could have actually been causing the condition my neighbor was reporting at high throttle it would shut down. It could just be something where the vibration was enough that it just started touching and kind of killing the spark that way. Not really sure. Uh, for now, I did put a little bit of tape on here just to help insulate it. Also, I was taking a closer look at this switch and I think I put these wires on wrong because when you put this switch in, the wires stick out and actually kind of hit the flywheel. So there's no way that that's the right orientation. So I'm just gonna pull that out and reverse the way these wires are connected to the switch. So close, so close to being done, but uh, yeah, not gonna be done anytime soon. This, there's a problem in here and I didn't notice it earlier, unfortunately. You know, I was putting the bar and chain on, just tensioning up the chain and noticed something. It's very clicky and it's binding. And what happens is when it, when it binds, chain's really tight and if I keep going kind of in between here it loosens up quite a bit and uh, initially I thought maybe this was the wrong chain uh, but I double checked it's supposed to be a 3 8 chain and that's exactly what this is it's 3 8 pitch and uh, low profile and that's exactly what this chain is uh, I also checked the bar although the bar is beat up a bit it is still fine. You know, ultimately, unfortunately, it ended up being that the sprocket is worn. Maybe I can show you here. So each one of these sprocket teeth has kind of a canyon cut into it with multiple peaks. And that's why this thing is binding up. That sprocket is worn and needs to be replaced. Unfortunately, to replace the sprocket, I need to pull this engine back out of this case uh, to get that sprocket off. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do. I just wanna take some measurements and make sure I get the correct part ordered so that we can finish this thing up. So I filled the cylinder with rope and that'll basically lock the engine up. I'm just gonna get this uh, sprocket off. So you can see here a little better some of the damage. Looks like there's multiple 
kind of valleys cut in here as well as troughs on each gear. So yeah, this thing definitely uh, needs to be replaced. Pull the tape off here. I just wanted to show you real quick the damage and it's not easily recognizable as missing insulation. And that's mostly because it's covered in oil and dirt and it's probably burned. So you don't see that wire color. It just looks almost like it's um, part of the uh, insulation. But you can see looking at it on the side, it's all that insulation's missing. Anyway, what I was guessing is, you know, it was probably installed something like this and the exhaust just melted off that insulation. So, you know, for now I will tape it again and just let my neighbor know. If he wants to replace it, I'm sure these coils aren't that expensive. Hope it fits. Just gonna put a little bit of grease on here for the roller bearing. Okay, good enough. Uh, I'm gonna put the bar on and the chain just like this and make sure everything moves the way that it should. All right, so the good and the bad. Good is this is the right sprocket, it fits on just fine. Uh, there's no more binding. It moves a lot better than it did before. Uh, but you still hear that clickety clack and that unfortunately I think is the bar. Uh, I'm not going to worry about it right now. You know, if my neighbor wants to switch the bar, it's an easy thing. It can be done without removing the engine from its shell. So I think we're safe to put this thing back together and bring it outside uh, for a test. I'm ready to give this thing a try. Uh, before I start it, I just want to explain what I'm going to do once it's running. You know, first off, assuming it starts, I'm going to let it run for about a minute, maybe a little longer. And while it's warming up, I'm going to adjust this idle screw. I want the engine to be a, a little bit faster than normal at idle so that this chain just starts to move. And once I find that point, I'm going to start adjusting the low speed jet, which on this carburetor is the one closest to the engine. And I want to find that sweet spot where this thing runs the fastest. And once I find that spot, I'm gonna dial it counterclockwise just until that engine starts to slow down a bit and stop. And that'll be favoring the rich side of things, which is good. You know, that way when you hit the throttle, it should take off. It's also gonna provide a little bit of extra fuel and oil, you know, to keep that engine uh, well lubed. As far as the high speed jet goes, I'm probably not gonna to touch that. To adjust that properly, you really need a tachometer, uh, which I have but it's the kind that goes on the spark plug wire. And it's just too tight to get it on in here. So I'm gonna leave it alone. Uh, I did set it back to the original setting, which was one and a quarter turns. So let's see if this thing starts and go from there.
bad for an old machine. You know, is it perfect? No. You know, there's definitely some things that still need to be done. You know, at some point, a new bar, a new coil, and a new clutch. But it's perfectly usable right now, so I think uh, my neighbor will be uh, pretty happy with the way this thing's running now. And uh, before I kind of sign out here, I do want to admit to two things. The switch here, actually, I think is supposed to be oriented the other way. So off is forward and run is back. And I put it in this way. It doesn't really matter, but that was a little mistake on my part. And a more important mistake, you know, when I was, I've been editing this video together and I put up a graphic of the rebuild kit and there was a two gaskets that came with the kit and I didn't notice it because they were stacked on top of each other inside that bag but when editing I, I saw that there were two and I don't remember seeing a second one in here there was only one on the side of the carb that had the check valve and when looking at the diagram that other gasket was supposed to go uh, in between the carburetor and the diaphragm and there wasn't one there when I took it apart and I was a little too quick to put it together without figuring out what that was for. And, you know, a lot of times in these kits, they do send you extra gaskets to kind of account for different versions of a carburetor. And, you know, I think that's kind of what I thought when I first noticed it. But, you know, now I can tell that, yeah, I should have used that gasket. So, you know, luckily the saw runs well. I don't see any fuel leaking, so... I think we're okay to leave it like that, but if I ever do replace that clutch, I'll fix that at that time. Anyway, hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.